Hi, I'm Jerry Kafitz, and I'm here to talk to you today about what constitutes a cult. And more specifically, I'm here to talk to you today about something that you may not have considered, but that happens, in fact, a good deal in Christianity, and that is how a good church drifts toward becoming a cult and eventually may become a cult. First of all, there are several books that I'd like to recommend to you on the subject of cults. The first is probably the authoritative book on the subject from a Christian perspective, and that is a book by Walter Martin called The Kingdom of the Cults, The Kingdom of the Cults by Walter Martin. The second is a very interesting book called The Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse, The Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse, and one of my favorites of all time is a book that every Christian ought to read called Toxic Faith, Toxic Faith. Now, if you're in a position of leadership in a church, you ought to read all three of these books, and you ought to digest these books, and you ought to contemplate them. If your position instinctively, when I say that to you, is, I don't need to read that, I have faith in my church, your church is vulnerable. Your church is vulnerable. There's a doctrine that applies to each and every one of us, and since the church is an institution made up of human beings, it applies collectively to the church, and that is the doctrine of the total depravity of man. There's nothing that can't happen to you, and there's nothing that can't happen to your church. That prevention is by God's grace and by your preparedness as a leader in your church. Study to show thyself approved. Now, let me ask you this question. What is a cult? What is a cult? Well, a cult is like driving. Anybody who drives faster than you, as you know, is just a reckless demon behind the wheel. And anybody who drives more slowly than you is asleep at the wheel. Done that. Guilty. And that's the way it is. But the best definition that I've heard of for a cult, and boy, you've got to go a long ways to find an accurate definition, is a definition that comes to us from Walter Martin, the author of The Kingdom of the Cults, one of the books that I showed you. And he says something like this. A cult is a group polarized around a strong leader who deviates from Orthodox Christianity in some significant way. A little bit of a paraphrase, but that's, that's what he says. And that definition is, in fact, quite true. Now, here's the problem. No cult is all bad, and no church is all good. So what do we have here? We have a lot of overlapping going on. And sometimes we have so much overlapping going on that it's difficult to recognize a cult for what it really is. Why? Because they believe, just like you do, in a lot of important foundational fundamental ways. But the distinctives are of a cult or in that there are some major areas where their belief differs from the beliefs of Orthodox Christianity, from the beliefs uh, brought out to us in Scripture. I'm going to be talking about those in this video and in some other videos in this series. I think I'm going to make five altogether. So, what happens then when a cult begins to deviate? Well, that cult, as it begins to deviate begins to identify itself in some way on the basis of some individual component of their doctrine that they have elevated to a status of greater importance than the other doctrines. You might call this a distinctive. You might call this a, a personal belief of the leader. You might call this an area in which the leader of this group believes that he is right. He has found some some major truth that everyone else has missed and he wants to identify himself and thus his group on the basis of that teaching of that doctrine. And he will become very, very defensive about that doctrine. He will become very critical of others who don't support that doctrine. Sometimes we call these uh, kinds of, of, of groups, these kinds of, of men, uh, one trick ponies, they have one doctrine, and it's one doctrine that they hit over and over and over again. You've heard them, I'm not going to go there, because most of the times those individual doctrines are correct. But 
The Bible says this. The Bible says preach the whole counsel of God. And that's something that they don't care to do. It's something that they don't do. And therein lies the problems. Therein lies the genesis of a cult. Therein are all the components that are necessary that when energized are the fuel from which cults are born and the fuel that move cults forward in the Christian world today. So uh, that's, the, that's the main thing that I want you to understand in the very beginning here as we do this series on cults. Read these books, read these three books, and understand the warning signs. Understand how cults develop, and then look at your church critically, honestly. There's no sin in that. There's no sin in having critical judgment. You don't have to check that at the church door. If that's a requirement of your church, you're in the wrong church. If your church is all about trust, 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 and never verify, never examine, then I've got a question for you. What happened to the doctrine of the priesthood of the believer? You are your own link to Jesus Christ. You don't need an intermediary. And if the guy standing behind your pulpit says he is that intermediary, that's a sure sign that you're in a cult or an organization that's fast becoming a cult. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you watch the others. I'm Jerry Kafitz.